did that. It was a joke. Daddy, you didn't Daddy, know the yeah. joke I accidentally made? I accidentally made the past week brother. When they were over. Is that why he said you're my new favorite? Okay. I also didn't really tell No, I know, but why is that Ricky was your favorite? I don't know, because he... <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Messiah Christian Church. We're so glad you're here with us today for the installation service of our new senior pastor, Pastor Steve Van Fossen. We rejoice that the Lord has led our new pastor and his wonderful wife, Marcy, here uh, to shepherd our congregation, and we're looking forward to the inspiring future that the Lord has planned for Messiah. Please join us in celebrating this occasion as a church family. Dear Lord, we come before you today with thanksgiving in our hearts as you are the giver of all good and perfect gifts. We thank you for bringing Pastor Steve and Marcy to us. As we know from Matthew 22:14. for many are called, but few are chosen. We ask that you bless them as they faithfully serve us. Give them grace and strength so that they may always glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, we're going to start off a little differently. We're going to have our penny drive first thing. So we're going to uh, ask Steve and Victoria to come up front. And uh, yep, we're going to, to do that first thing this morning. Here we go. Good morning, everybody. I don't really need a microphone. Um, no. Yes. So I've been away. I went to Michigan to get my mother, and she's coming in the door right now as we speak. And so um, we're back. And I want to know how the ladies did while I was away for the penny drive. We, for those of you who don't know, we have a penny drive. We're raising money to get a new refrigerator for the church. And every year we do a penny drive. And it doesn't mean just pennies. It also can mean, like, paper and other types of money, um, but whatever your heart or whatever the Lord leads you to give is what we, uh, what we are asking. And so, uh, whew. That's the, that's the All right, so no big surprise. Ladies, you did a great job. The ladies are ahead. The girls, is it up there? No, I don't oh, it is now. Has it been up there the whole time? Yeah. Oh, it wasn't even a surprise. Okay, so the girls, $335.35, and the boys, $227.76. Uh, but we know how this goes, ladies. The guys wait till the last minute, and then they dump all their money. So be aware. Be aware, because they don't want us to win. So we can't let that happen. We got to keep them on their toes. So who goes first today? Do you have anything to say? Sorry. She, that, <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. Guys, you got to remember we're outnumbered in the church, so we really need to do give. And, you know, we need that refrigerator. And maybe it'll say donated by the boys at Penny Drive, huh? Won't that be that? Well, that's all right. That's all right. We, you know, we still have to. And you people out in TV land, too, you, you can. You know, just just send your little contribution. You can mark them off for the boys if you want, but I don't know whether the girls will. But anyway, so no, we're gonna have the ladies go first right. this week, I think. So. Okay. Okay, ladies, come on down. Bring us your money, honey. <laughs> some counting back there for the money changers. The sound of cash. All right. 
That's what I like to see, my young, my young kids. Here they come. It goes almost out the door, I think. It did at one point. Thank you. Woohoo! All right, ladies, that looks. That, look at that wad. Did you see that? All right, here, it's your turn. My turn? Okay, guys, we got a nice big bowl here. We can fill it right up, right, guys? Okay, it's our turn. Let's do it, guys. See if we can get caught up. Come. Come on, guys. We can do this. All right. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, guys. All right. Here we go. Oh, see, now that guy's line is all out the door just about, so we're getting there. That's right. That's right. Hey, thank you. All right, guys. Really appreciate this, too. All right. Hey, thank you, everybody. All right, who brought the busload of women in? Come on. Anyways, we're going to start our tithes and our offering. <clears throat> if you are a visitor to the church, uh, when you came in, hopefully you get a visitor's pack. If you did, inside there'd be a visitor's card. If you could, please fill that out and drop it into the uh, collection plate. And we would really appreciate it. If you did not get one and you would like one, please see one of the leaders before you leave and fill that out. In a minute on your screen, for those out there in uh, computer land, slide will come up on various ways to give. And there's also a link in the Facebook comment section. The link's direct to our PayPal account, the Messiah Christian Church family. Let us pray. Today, I am going to start off with a very familiar scripture. John 3, 16. For God loved the world that he gave his only son and that whoever believes in him shall not perish and have eternal life. Generosity is an experience of love. God is the ultimate picture of generosity. As he gave his very son for our salvation. Giving does not earn you internal life but it is a powerful response to God's love why we give back to God because he gave to us in John 1 John 3 1 see what great love the father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God and that it is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not know him. Amen.
because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. thanks. Amen. I'd like to ask you guys to stand up and join us this morning. We're going to worship the Lord. time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. confess you are God one day every knee will bow still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now come now is the time to worship come now is the time to give your heart just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come. One day every tongue will confess you are God, one day every knee will bow, still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made it when it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. All about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. is not my own to you I belong I give myself I give myself to you 
my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. And here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. My life is not my own, to you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you, Jesus. My life is not my own, to you I I give myself, I give myself to you. Oh, my life is not my own. To you I belong. Oh, I give myself, I give myself to you. My life, my life. And my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. I give myself, I give myself to you. I give myself, I give myself to you. Amen.
that is who you are yes you are god you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are and that is who you are 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 and that is who you are that is who you are that is who you are that is Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, whoa. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. You are way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. And that is who you are. 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 Oh, and that is who you are, and that is who you are, 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 yes you are, that is who you are, that is who you are, we believe that that is who you are. 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 Oh God, know who you are, God. Know who you are, God. That is who you are. That is who you are. We love you for who you are. Believe in who you are. Oh. Amen. God is so good. We're going to have Marcy come up at this time and um, share a song with us. Good morning. We haven't met yet. Hi, Marcy Van Fossen. And uh, Reagan, let me uh, sing with her today to sing a song for you. Um, the song I'm going to sing is called For the One. And we put the words up on the, we're going to have the words on the screen. If you know it, you can sing along. Um, but I feel like if I had to choose a song that would be the theme song for uh, ministry for me, it would be this song. And uh, I know Pastor Steve would probably pick something like Stripers to Hell with the Devil or something rocking like that, you know, because he's more rock star than me. But this one, <laughs> this one is my theme song. Um, 
And I like this song because it's written in the form of a prayer. And um, it asks that we be filled with the love of God so that we can love others completely like God can. Because we cannot complete his mission in our own strength. We're going to need his strength and his love for others. Uh, in Luke 14, 23, <clears throat> Jesus taught uh, with the parable of the banquet. And he said these words. He said, And the master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. So this doesn't mean um, to go out and just try to get people to come to church. Because he said this to the disciples 2,000 years ago, and there was no formal church like we have today. So this verse means we are to go out and spread the gospel, not so that this church house is filled, but that our Father's house in heaven is filled. Amen. So if you know it, and sing along. If not, then you can just, um, just talk to the Lord. Let me be filled with kindness and compassion for the one the one for whom you loved and gave yourself for humanity increase my love so help me to love with open arms like you do a love that erases all the lines and sees the truth oh that when they look in my eyes they would see you even in just a smile they would feel the Father's love Oh, how you love us From the homeless To the famous And in between You formed us You made us carefully Cause in the end We're all your children so help me to love with open arms like you do. A love that erases all the lines and sees the truth. Oh, that when they look in my eyes, they would see you. Even in just a smile. They would feel the Father's love. So let all my life tell of who you are and the wonder of your never ending love. So let all my life tell of who you are. That you're wonderful and such a good father. So let all my life tell of who you are. And the wonder of your never-ending love. Oh, let all my life tell of who you are. That you're wonderful and such a good father. That you are wonderful and such a good father. So help me to love with open arms like you do. A love that erases all the lines and sees the truth. Oh, that when they look in my eyes, they would see you, even in 
even just a smile, they would feel the Father's love. Even in just a smile, they would feel the Father's love. Great. Well, good morning, everyone. How are we today? You look great. Look at the person beside you and say, you look more like Jesus today than you did yesterday. Tell them. We want to welcome you to the service today. This is um, the culmination of a journey that we've been on since uh, last September. Um, and we are going to be installing uh, Pastor Stephen Marcy today as the senior leaders here at Messiah Christian Church. And um, I just want to, first of all, extend my incredible uh, love and appreciation to the elders here in the house who have really carried this house. Um, I mean, I've preached on Sunday via, yes, <laughs> applaud, really carried the house. And um, so thank you, thank you to, uh, to, to all of you. And I'm going to have you come, if you will, you know, Barb and um, everybody and Amanda and, you know, just we're going to come and we're going to lay hands on Pastor Steve, um, you know, and, and, uh, at the end of the service today, that's what we're going to do. But I wanted to say thank you for first and foremost for that. Um, it's been a great journey together, and I think that we've really, uh, through fasting and prayer, thank you numerous times during the month, uh, last few months, I've asked you as a church to fast and pray for the right leader, and I know that many of you did that, and again, I want to thank you for that, um, because it's so important. Because, you know, leadership in the church is not political. That's what we don't understand so often. You know, so often in the church world, we look at, you know, church uh, pastor filling in a pulpit is just like a job, you know. <laughs> you know. Let me put in a job application, you know, and then I'll get the job. But when you look at, at biblically, the kingdom of God, it's never about that. It's not, it's not about pol uh, politics. It's about placement by the Spirit of God. And so we believe, you know, if your pastor's placed there by the Spirit of God, your church is going to flourish and it's going to be blessed. If he's, he or she is there by political means, uh, then that's what you're going to have a lot of politics. Um, but with the presence of God and the placement of God comes the release of the purpose of God. And I really believe for this next season, you know, that we found the man and God is putting him in place and that you're going to see the purpose of the church and what God desires in the next season uh, for this house. So I'm, I'm excited for you. Um, I've gotten to know Steve and Marcy not as well as I'm going to get to know them because I'm not really leaving. I'm going to always be around, <laughs> you know, kind of uh, in the background. Um, and when I say be around, just to be a friend and have coffee. That's what I mean by be around. But, um, you know, I've been with this church since it was conceived and birthed, and it's great to see it go through all these years. And I'm looking forward to the next, you know, 20 years or more and what the Lord's going to do uh, through his ministry. It's going to be exciting. So what I'd like to do this morning, I know we have our program, and I appreciate Ruth, you know, doing the program, um, but I really felt like I just needed to make you aware of what we're doing, and we're particularly honored to have Steve's brother with us this morning, and I would like for him to come and share some thoughts, uh, that things that are on his heart, um, and if he would do that, that would be really great. Um, and then I'm going to share a very brief message, and then we're going to close out by having Steve and Marcy come. We have a special gift for you guys, and we're also going to lay hands on you and be released. So that's how we're going to do the order. So let's welcome Pastor Ron. Is it Ron? Yes, come on. Yeah. Good morning. You know, I, uh, I feel like your family. I've, I've been here a couple of times now, and, and Ruth and Butch have treated me like family, and the places that I've gone to eat in your homes have been so wonderful and felt like family. The, the other day, I got to hang out in a parking lot in Wells. What's the name of that parking lot, Steve? The Wells parking lot. Is that it? It's the Wells parking lot. And I, uh, I misplaced my key to my Jeep, my one and only key to my Jeep, in the Atlantic Ocean. Very expensive misplacement. Uh, but what I, what I found it, what I thought was just so cool, is that um, I was standing there with the hood up. Don't ask why. It's complicated with the Jeep but uh, waiting for a locksmith to come. And I had no less than six people try to give me a jump. Come on. One, one person that, that seemed senior, but now that I look in the mirror, maybe he wasn't senior. 
and it's all relative. But he, he actually pulled his minivan right up to the front of my car, jumped out with cables, and I was like, oh, wow. No, I, I don't need that. But uh, it's been wonderful to be here. And I want to share a piece of scripture and just some thoughts this morning. Um, but I want to tell you, it's, uh, it's a very, very giving community. And you can feel, feel that here. I want to look at one piece of scripture found in Ephesians chapter 4 and verses 11 and a little bit into 12, maybe all into 12. It says this, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some to prophets, some to evangelists, some to pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. What I want to just share this morning just briefly is that that word pastor there, it's the only time it's used in the New Testament. It literally means shepherd. And Steve and I are shepherds. It all started almost 60 years ago when my father, who was raised in a really dysfunctional and terrible home in a storefront church, stepped out to an old hymn called Just As I Am and gave his heart to Christ. And he started the legacy. And in some ways, I I don't know about the theological implications of this, but we have not only a calling into this being a shepherd, but also a legacy as well. And when I think about it on today's day, I think that more than anything else, our identity, who we are as shepherds, is what we need to lead out of. And I wanted to share those thoughts. See, shepherds are people who go after lost sheep. You know, that one that's out there that's gone. Shepherds are the ones that to kill the lion and the bear to get to those that are lost or to protect those they love. And one of the things, and I, I wanted, this is maybe if you want to say one big word for today, because I think it has implications for your next season, is that over the last 20, 30 years, we have learned all kinds of things about church growth and purpose-driven life and uh, how to successfully manage the corporation of church and how to expand our membership and how to fill more pews. And it didn't really work, you know. And we, we tried to be these great leaders and these engaging preachers and all of those things. And again, it, it really didn't work. And what I think you have in Steve, which, by the way, he is the smarter, brighter, more intelligent, um, some say better looking, <laughs> shepherd of the bunch between me and him. But you have a brilliant leader who really has a heart for being a shepherd. And the, the thing, it, it may seem like just like not a big deal, but this is a huge deal to me. It's one of the big revelations in this season of my life is that we don't try to be the greatest leader or the greatest preacher, but we be, and I think that's who, I know that's who Steve is, we be shepherds. I know that's bad grammar, you just have to put up with it. He's the doctor. I'm not. But we are shepherds and we, we lead out of shepherding. We preach out of shepherding. We go after our sheep out of that calling. And I think in this season, if we do that, we can truly love and see people change like we've never seen before. Because, see, a shepherd is not just about, and I think that's what church growth has kind of come to, is not just about a number in a pew. No. We're family. Right? I mean, that's one of the wonderful things that you have made me feel from the moment I got here, is I'm family. From the wonderful meals to everybody trying to jump my car in the parking lot. They kept telling them, no, it's not a battery issue. It's a key issue. <laughs> it's just family. And see, when a shepherd understands his sheep are family, that changes everything. It, it changes how we live and how we look. and how I'm going to my, put my glasses on. I thought I could read this, but I can't without them. Because I'm the older brother. Yes. When we lead out of that, we change the world we live in, you know? When we lead out of that, we have the opportunity to change lives. And and I believe with all my heart that Steve is uniquely built for this particular moment to lead out of that in such a fashion that you can literally transform this community one life at a time. We serve God out of that identity. 
We pursue his kingdom out of that identity, and we operate in his kingdom out of that identity. And we don't engage in anything other than loving people like Jesus would love them. Yeah. So I want to just give you this closing thought that I wrote down. I believe so much that Steve will serve God with all of his heart, that he'll serve you as a shepherd, and that doing that, he'll lead you in a path that has incredible and miraculous results. Amen? All right. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Thank you so much for those comments, and we feel the same way. <laughs> We've been uh, really impressed with Steve and um, feel that he's a true shepherd and are, are pretty excited about him being here. Um, I'm not going to share a long, lengthy message today. Just a few thoughts I'd like to uh, talk to you about, and really it's about transition. Um, and transition is always, always a change for the future. And that's what we have to remember, you know, and let's face it, often we don't really, we're not comfortable with change, you know, we're just, as creatures, we're just not, that our creature comfort is not change and transition. But the thing that amazes me about God, and I want to use Moses and Joshua just for a moment, because that's one of the best transitions in the scripture. There are quite a few of them, uh, but that's probably the big one, because you, you know, according to Acts 7, you know, they were the church in the wilderness. Moses was a pastor, apostle, whatever you'd like to call him. Um, and Joshua, although Moses had um, other men around him, you know, Joshua was always uh, highlighted in some form or another before um, he, you know, took over leadership. And the idea behind that was that God had really chosen Moses to, for a specific work, like every pastor, like every leader, you're chosen for a specific work for a specific season. And Moses was smart enough to realize his season was over. You know, he didn't argue with God about that. Um, some people like to argue with God. It, it's a futile task, um, you know, because he has a plan, and he's going to work his plan. And there's a famous uh, situation where Moses was up on the mountain, and he's, you know, getting the law from God, and um, it's in Deuteronomy 32. And actually, we don't realize that Moses uh, was, we think, alone, but almost probably about halfway up the mountain, maybe three-quarters, Joshua was there as well. And, um, and when Moses came back down, it was interesting that uh, Joshua said, wow, um, there's, there's a bunch of war going on in the camp. You know, Joshua heard warfare going on. Sounds like there's a warfare. Moses said, no, no, they're singing. So, you know, Moses knew that they had already turned to idolatry. They'd already broken God's law. And then Moses, and then Joshua was saying, you know, that they had, uh, he was hearing war. And wh what I mean by that is that when you look at Joshua, his calling, his mantle, his ministry was to engage the people in war. So whatever your mantle in ministry is, that is what you're going to demonstrate and how you're going to lead. And that's very, very important. Because I feel, Pastor Steve, that, you know, God has led you here. He gave me a, a really cool word for you in prayer, um, that your touch is treasure. Your touch is treasure. And I thought about that with the shepherd as Pastor was speaking, and how, you know, there's nothing more that a sheep wants than the touch of the shepherd. And I believe, you know, God has uniquely brought you and Marcy here to touch this community and um, to bring a lot of healing. You have a lot of healing that flows through you as a person. Um, it's not just intellectual. It's not just quoting scriptures. It's a real heart of compassion. And so God has uniquely brought you here into this community at this season because there's a lot of wounds in this region that need to be healed. And he's given you a really cool mantle to do that. And not everybody has that mantle. <laughs> they just don't. Um, some people are good at other things, but some people are good at touch and, and tenderness and uh, that's, the, that's, I feel, the way you are. Um, and I'm going to pray, you know, that, that that's accurate because I'm just praying from my spirit. But I, I really sense that, you know, in the Lord. And the Lord's really planted you here to be a healing vessel of his grace. And, um, and through, I, I, just see, I just see multitudes of people just lined up for healing. That's um, so what I see in the spirit. I don't, you, we've talked. We don't care about numbers. It's not about how big the church grows. That's what I love about him. He's saying, I have the same attitude. 
It's about the quality of people that you touch and are their lives growing? Are they being changed? It's not about adding more numbers. I mean, numbers can come and go. You know, we see that. But, you know, Joshua heard war. Moses heard song. You know, because Moses was actually the pastor of worship. You know, he established the tabernacle, which was the greatest form of worship. So every leader hears the purpose of God that's in their heart. Every leader hears the purpose of God that's in their heart. And I really believe, you know, Steve was drawn here um, by the Spirit of God. When our committee, we were looking, you know, Steve actually reached out. And he said, I really feel, you know, God's, I feel something about that place. And I might add, he's the only one this time around who actually said those words. And those are words that I was looking for the last time around when we got our leader and, and this time around. I'm like, who feels God is calling them here? Not, not because of a job. Who feels that the Spirit of God is saying, come to this region? Because if you don't have the Spirit of God, you can't stand. And particularly in the warfare that's in the land right now. You know, churches are giving in and caving in uh, to, to the spiritual darkness, not opposing it and standing against it. So you have to have the Spirit of God, uh, you know, to, to come in. And I really feel that about Steve and Marcy. I feel that they are planted by the Holy Spirit. And therefore, they have the protection of God, that going to get the plan of God, the purpose of God. And I just saw him, you know, as a, as a shepherd touching the sheep. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you know, his touch is a treasure. It's one of my treasure houses. You know, a scribe brings things out of the treasure house, both, both new and old. Well, I feel Pastor Steve has a lot of treasure, both new and old, that the Holy Spirit's going to give him for this congregation, for this flock. So I use the example of Moses and Joshua. And Joshua you know, did not do what Moses did. You know, it wasn't, that was over. That season with Moses was over. And now they've got to go into battle. So whatever the Lord lays on the heart, you know, of Pastor Steve and Marcy, that's what you're called to run with. That's what you're called to stand with. And that's important, you know, that when uh, churches do go through transitions, that the congregation transitions with them. Um, that's a very important part. Like someone said to me, once they said, you know, if, you're, if you think you're a leader and nobody's following, uh, you're not a leader, you know. Um, and there are many people that have that mindset that they're a leader, but if you look behind them, there's no one following. And, uh, you know, and that's a sad thing almost because they, they believe it. Um, but anyway, I, I think that, you know, you have been seasoned and prepped by the Lord, um, particularly the leaders that have helped carry the mantle of the ministry um, these 11 months. Uh, you you are, have been marinated. That's the word I feel in my heart. You've just been marinated gently by the Spirit of God, making sure the right man's coming. The heart is massaged and saturated. And I think that you're really ready to do some great things in the kingdom of God. And um, I, I know Barb feels that way. She's going, that's right, Pastor around. So, you know, and uh, Gail feels that way, I'm sure. Amanda feels that way, right, Amanda? Amen, amen. So we're, we're all good here. A couple more thoughts um, in a healthy transition. You, know, you can have bad transitions and you can have good transitions. And in a healthy transition, first and foremost, which is what I want to reiterate today, we have to trust in God and his presence, not in human leaders. Because human leaders come and go. But, you know, I was meditating on this church. I said, you know, in every church, you know, God, God, God in his mind, his infinite mind, which is so hard for us to even fathom, when he looks down over his planet, the earth, because it belongs to him, and he chooses to plant, you know, the identity of his kingdom, you know, through churches, and he chooses where he wants to plant them. It's his choice. You know, and then he gets the leaders to fill it. Again, he chooses the leaders who they are. And I was thinking about his covering over this ministry during this transition time. I was really, it brought me to tears, because I thought, Lord, even if a man would not appear you would be here? If a man would not appear, I would be here. That's what he said to me. That you could come to this place and he would be here. Wow. And is that not where our heart ought to always be? We love our leaders. We respect our leaders. But they have feet of clay. We all have feet of clay. But the important thing is that where God has chose to put his name and put his place, he says, I will meet you there. I will be there for you. And I know that's what, when I would come up on Sunday or be here or call on Tuesday, I was just reminded that the Lord is there. The Lord is there. He's taking care of all the things. 
because he's the great shepherd. He's taking care of all the things that we're not even thinking of at this point. Um, and it's his presence. And you know, Moses said that, in fact, this is the, this is the theme of transition throughout the Bible. Uh, from Moses to David uh, and Solomon, um, all the way you know, up into Jesus and the 12 apostles. The theme of transition was God said, I will be with you. My presence, my spirit will be with you first and foremost. Always remember that. So we're transitioning, you know, here at Messiah into the next move and purpose of the Lord with what he wants to do. I know part of that's going to be incredible healing for people and restoration in the church. Um, I think that Steve is a bridge builder, um, that he's one that will restore the breach and uh, build up the wall. Um, I really feel that about him. As Isaiah said, those that will be in me will restore the old waste places, build up the bridge and the wall, um, which is really great. But first and foremost, I want you to remember that the presence of God should be the number one thing that we're all seeking, seeking for. And I know Pastor Steve would want that when you come on Sunday. Yes, he's thrilled to feed you and guide you and lead you, but he always wants you to keep Jesus as your shepherd. Yeah, you know, we're, just, we're just under shepherds. That's all we are. That's what Peter said. We're just under shepherds. And um, we always have to look to the great shepherd. And so all the transitions in the, in the scriptures were all about you know, Moses said, if you don't go before me in your presence, I'm not going. And then, you know, God spoke to Joshua and spoke to the people. I will go before you in my presence. I will go before you with my presence. David, you know, so wanted the capital of the nation to have the presence of God. You folks have read the scriptures. You're familiar with all I'm saying. So I'm not going to give you all the details today because you're educated in the scriptures. And that's a wonderful thing to have a congregation. Uh, Pastor Dan and Rosemary, you know, the years that they were here, the word of God they sowed into you what wonderful leaders they were for their season here. They faithfully led the church. We give honor and respect to them today. Um, and we thank God for their willingness to obey the call of God, their willingness to come to, to uh, be the servant for the season that God had them in at that time. And um, but just like everyone, you know, things transition out. And so they're happy, I'm sure, in their new journey. And uh, they're praying, as always, for you, and we'll be praying for the church continuously. And um, just, just great people. I can't say enough about them. As you know, I've been here preaching throughout the years with them and working with them. And um, it's exciting to, to see God release them into a new ministry and what they feel on their heart to do to shepherd the kingdom and, and the church in the next season. So with that being said, I'm going to ask Pastor and Marcy to come. That wasn't a long sermon, was it? Didn't do too badly. I just want to share my thoughts. And if you guys would come and stand down, I'm going to ask the elders to come, if you will. And um, Pastor Ron, you know, Ron, come and stand with this as well. And um, when you guys come, husbands and wives, Joe and Sandy and everybody, Gail, come on. Those of you that were on the board. Amanda, I wanted you to come. You've been preaching and filling in. Great. Cool. Happy day. So we're just going to pray and ask God's, uh, you know, we're just affirming what God's already done. You know, he's already planted. We're just putting a little anointing water on the tree this morning. That's all right. That's so, that's, that's, so, Father, we thank you. Thank you for this season um, in this couple's life. Lord, thank you for uh, the new chapter. Well, no, actually, it's a new book. Um, the Lord just, just says it's a new book that I'm writing for you and, um, and writing with you and working with you. And there's some dreams you've had um, since you were young in ministry, and the Lord says it's this season when they will come to pass. Dreams with your children, dreams um, in the economic realm, particularly economically, God is going to bless you. Um, I, I keep, whenever I pray for you guys and I pray for you, I just keep sensing that um, there's a, a dream going to appear in the realm of, the, uh, of economics, um, which, which has a lot of meaning and, and symbolism um, for you as leaders in the kingdom of God. So, Lord, we bless them today. Lord, we um, ask that you would uh, just cause uh, their placement here today to be surrounded with your presence first and foremost. And as these uh, leaders and I myself are, are with them, that we are... We're placed beside them, Lord, to encourage them, to help them in their leadership, and to love them, and to be with them. And may they always know they have friends 
uh, hear God in this house, and they have family, Lord, and that they can um, can uh, throw down any any things of perfection and just be the great people that they are. And we just rejoice in that, and thank you for their transparency today. Thank you for the reality of the passion that Steve feels to shepherd your people. And I thank you for the healing he's going to bring to this community at large. And uh, thank you for just causing uh, the unity to come in shepherds in the region and just great, great revival and renewal um, in this area for the church of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you for your continued healing upon them and health in their physical body. Lord, we ask as well, God, that, um, that the mantle you would put on them today, Lord, um, would just be the mantle for, for the ministry and the purpose and the destiny for this season. Um, thank you, God, that it's a new season for them and a new season for this house and this region. And I thank you that um, he would walk in the ministry uh, faithfully and what you've called him to do. Uh, together, they would walk hand in hand. And Lord, that you support them in the land and uh, cause them to flourish. Uh, Lord, I just speak flourishing over them. Um, may they bloom. May they blossom. May this be the greatest season of their life here as they serve you um, and serve your presence in this house. And we just uh, dedicate them to you today. And we, again, give uh, our lip service to the fact of uh, this is your house. And we just speak it out. And uh, we thank you for that, Father, for uh, uh, holding this home together holding this house as a holy place while we were in transition. Yeah. We thank you for the great holding hand of God, the hand that holds us all. Thank you for holding everything together today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we have a special gift for you guys. Let me get this up. And we've got something else. There we go. We've got some flowers for you. <laughs> so let's stand and welcome your new pastors, and um, great to have them. <laughs> cool. All right. Can I say anything? I think you do. He asked me if I wanted to say anything. <laughs> I, said, I said, of course you do. <laughs> Have you ever heard a pastor that didn't have something to say? <laughs> Marcy and I are so blessed. Um, I struggle with words when I'm put in situations like this because um, really I'm only in my element when I'm talking about Jesus. Uh, and so... Um, we're excited about what God has planned. Um, our desire is that you would keep us in your prayers every single day. Um, the last thing that I would ever want to do is displease my Lord and Savior. And so, uh, but we're going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you to walk deep in the Spirit. Uh, I'm going to challenge you to understand what it really, truly believe, means to be with Jesus Christ. The world knows a lot about Jesus. But it's our call to know Jesus and to share that with the world. And so, um, thank you. Thank you for letting us come up here and be uh, a part of this wonderful congregation. And thank you for all the wonderful, many, exciting, powerful ministries that we're going to be a part of in these coming years. And so, um, Marcy and I, we love you. I, I, I know you might think, well, you haven't been here long enough, okay? No, we do. We love you. We love you very much. Now, there may be times when you don't like us. Well, you probably like Marcy all the time, but um, but we love you so deeply, and we're so thankful to be here. And I don't know what else to say, because I just, you know. That's awesome. That's awesome. Love you. I appreciate you. Well, that's our last song. That's our last song.
the goodness of God? No, don't worry about the transition. Yeah. Let's all stand together. We're going to close out with our last song today, The Goodness of God. And isn't he a good God? Yeah. Amen. Let's praise him. to invite you downstairs I think it's a downstairs for fellowship uh, food you'll smell it you'll find it um, I don't know if it was in the gym or if it was here so God bless you have a great week and uh, be safe and uh, love you appreciate you so excited for you 
And uh, please take time to stay. And I'm sure you've already met Stephen Marcy and uh, had him over for dinner, but have a cup of coffee together. God bless you. See you later.